Hello everyone and welcome to the second generation of a Porsche pickup that manages to pull up double duty as a work tool and also as a family transportation which is this new Volkswagen Amarok. So in today's video we're going to be finding out everything in detail about this Amarok. So this new Amarok is offered in four different variants which is the comfort line, the style, Pan Americana and the top of the line Aventura model. So the one that I'm currently reviewing is the top of the line Amarok Aventura and the Pan Americana is more of an off-roader hardcore version. So if you're looking for a proper off-roading pickup truck then that's the one to go for but this is more of a everyday kind of pickup that you can use for dual purposes. This Amarok is actually a combined joint project between Ford and the Volkswagen which is why this Amarok is actually based on the Ford Ranger which is why you would notice a lot of bits which are very similar to the Ranger but the exterior is completely new and just a few bits like these side mirrors the door handles and that's the only thing that is shared with the Ranger but otherwise the exterior is completely redesigned by Volkswagen so let me begin from the front now so you get this big grille out here with this Volkswagen badging this silver color stripes out here with the normal plastic in between and this grill also extends on the bottom this silver color plastic out here also you have this big wide opening out here with the sensor in there in the middle then this Amarok badging that has been given very hard to miss so if you want to tell people which car you're driving then it's right there in the front too at the bottom there's a bit of a skid plate also there are towing points that are given on either side out here you would find normal black plastic that surrounds these fog lights so you get led fog lights on this amarok there are also these vents which are also functional vents so air goes in from here and channels out from the back this big huge bonnet out here with these arches and some hard lines and when you come to these headlights you get matrix led headlight cluster on this amarok and everything is dynamic you have the the turn signals and everything everything is led there are also c-shaped drls that are given out here and those same c-shaped drls convert into turn signals there are also the cornering lights combined with these fog lights so and it also auto adjusts the beam based on the traffic so everything is just pretty clever it's the matrix led light so they will just handle everything for you so yeah the new amarok is also pretty advanced in that sense now on the sides you get 20 inch alloy rims in this dual tone color which is black and silver and there's also a camera which has been mounted in the front on the windscreen so that is used for all your safety systems and your adaptive cruise control and everything there are also these plastic arches that are given out here to protect your fender at the bottom you get this fixed sideboard with this chrome strip going from one end to the other it's not actually chrome but it's more like a silver color plastic trim that has been given and in terms of these side mirrors these are the chrome side mirrors at the bottom there's just normal plastic these are power foldable they are power adjustable they also have the blind spot warning inside of them there is also one of the cameras from the 360 degree camera system there is also a light for when you go at night so it can illuminate the ground for you and as i mentioned these side mirrors are actually borrowed from the ranger and there's also one single chrome strip given at the bottom from one end to the other you get these chrome door handles and the front doors are keyless entry doors and on the top you get silver color roof rails that are given you don't get any sunroof or anything on this Amarok there's also the Amarok Aventura badging out here Pan Americana has the Pan Americana one out here the four motion badging for your four wheel drive system it's more of a decal that has been given out here even in the back you get 20 inch alloy rims and the base variant comes in with 17 inches whereas the Pan Americana comes with 18 inch rims on this Amarok you get leaf springs given in the rear and this bed and you don't get a single cab option on this Amarok but instead you get the dual cab option on this Amarok so that's the only single available trim in that sense there's also this 
bar, plastic bar that goes from one end to the other. On the Pan Americana, it's more of a roll cage that is visible in the black color. So a lot of bits are blacked out on that. And you have these rear tail lights that extend onto the side profile. And this Amarok has a wading depth of 800 millimeters. So the previous generation had 500 millimeters, whereas this one has 800 millimeters, which is quite a lot. And even the wheelbase now is longer, whereas the car length itself is pretty long. So in that sense, you get quite a lot of space on this new Amarok. Now in the rear, you get the C-shaped completely LED taillight cluster, turn signals, reversing, everything is LED and out here, normal plastic bumper, but on top, you would find a dash of chrome on this side and also on the other side, a step out here with some grippy material so that you can easily climb onto the back. There's also this towing hook that has been given, but that's also removable. But I would suggest that you remove it because I've hit my leg quite a fair few times because I haven't noticed it's my fault. Yes, but yeah, you can remove that and put it inside. There's also a spare wheel that has been mounted underneath the floor. And there is also this power socket 13 pin that has been provided. So when you put a trailer or something, you can connect that to this power supply also then in terms of the visibility it's actually pretty good on this because it's just a vertical glass and the visibility is so bright and wide and broad so you can easily see everything that's going on in the rear for you and there are very slim pillars on this so that makes it even more easier there's also this amarok badging out here in the back big one and then volkswagen badging in here and the four motion to tell you that it's a four wheel drive system on this thing and in order to open the boot door there's a handle that has been given you just pull it and open this door and there are no dampers or anything but in fact you have these strings so yeah it just falls directly so just make sure you hold it a little bit longer before it just goes down and you are greeted to some humongous boot space out here. Obviously, it's a pickup, but you also get this cover out here, which is an electronic cover. So you can press the button and open it. See, double press it and it opens this cover for you. It rolls it back or if you want to close it, just press it again. See that? it closes but let me just open it because i want to show you the boot space in the back and the boot floor itself is covered with this grippy material black color one even on the main cargo space it's been covered with that so it just gives you more grip and it's not the body color one because that would obviously scratch it up a little bit and then this electronically foldable cover also consumes a little bit of space in there in the back that's the only thing there are also tying hooks and everything that are given out here in the back let me sit because yeah it can these strings would take some of the load for sure and as i said there are hooks and everything that are given out here there are also boot lights that are given and it's pretty big that way the arches are pretty slim in here and not just that there's also a 12 volt power socket that has been given on this side and also a button to close this slidable cover so you can do that from the inside also so in case you don't have the key in your pocket you can do that but obviously when it's open you can just close it or you can put this door down and then open it there are multiple ways there is also a button that has been given on the inside on the driver side which you can open this cover again from the inside also but in terms of the towing capacity this Amarok can tow up to 3.5 tons of yeah luggage or whatever you tie it to the back of this hook and the payload or the carrying capacity of this bed is 1190 kilograms which is again pretty decent because obviously there's no liters or anything that you can measure but it's more like in the tons because this car comes with a 2.3 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine and to pull 3.5 tons and also to have 1,190 kilograms of cargo capacity, that's also pretty impressive. Now this new Amarok is a premium pickup truck. So the moment you sit inside, you would notice immediately that the fit and finish, the quality of materials, the design, the layout is very much aligned with the Volkswagen quality. And also it feels like a quality place to sit in. So let me begin from the dashboard out here. You get this 
soft touch material dashboard out here with this white color stitching and this sort of ivory color and then there is this plastic grill for the speaker that is given but that's a little bit flimsy is what i find even on the door cars on the top you have this leather covered material a little bit so you can rest your hands on it i don't know if you drive like this let me know in the comment section below and it's again in the ivory color at the bottom of that it's just normal plastic where you're going to be resting hands that's again black color leather covered with white color stitching and at the bottom more plastic even out here there is plastic on this glove box is plastic so it's also durable because uh, the plastic makes sure that you know it can just sustain all the day-to-day -day of usage also but end of the day it's still an off-road pickup truck so yeah it's for that the materials are all kind of mix and match and there's also this plastic trim given around the gear knob that resembles like the brushed aluminium even out here there is the same one and it's also like a door so when you open there's like storage that is given in there and also these door handles they are unique so like you press them and then yeah open the door so again that's very much similar to the ford if you notice that and there are also mood lights that are given out here in the door cards and even out here in the dashboard underneath a little bit so yeah you can just change it like switch it on and off from inside the infotainment screen so that's about it there are also grab handles that are given out here in the front and also for the rear passengers so yeah it's it's a pretty posh place to sit in there are also these dual tone leather seats that are given the handrest again that's also leather covered on top with the white color stitching but again that's a little bit floppy yeah moves around a little bit and then yeah the quantity again near that also is all plastic but overall it's a mixed bag and i wouldn't complain because it's much of a daily user so for that this is pretty good now when you come to the driver's display you get a 12.3 inch digital driver's display and it's got a lot of features and a lot of information that you can see on it so on your left side you have the rev counter and on the right side you have the speedometer and in between those dials there's also information that you can change and also there's information in the middle that you can change and in order to change the information the buttons are given on this steering itself but let me begin from the center screen so you have the off-road basically status what's the steering angle and everything and then the pitch and roll then your power distribution then your engine information and then you go to the next side the towing status when you go to the right side oil life your tire pressure then your settings where you can customize the left gate so you press that and you can change basically your engine oil temperature all of that transmission you can see what's the parameters on the left side basically and then select whatever average fuel average speed all of that and then you go back then you can customize the right gauge where you can see your oil the engine oil temperature transmission turbo boost all of that similar features so whatever you select on the left side is removed and then you can put the rest of the options on the right side then you go back then there's a secondary speedo so it shows you speed at the bottom like a tiny one again if you want to have more speeds displayed on your screen you can do that then there is the navigation option you can select your home previous destination all of that then your phone option your audio option and then you come to the trip settings where you have the trip one information trip two how you're doing fuel economy auto stop start seat belts and the calm screen where it just shows you the car on your screen so nothing else is shown apart from that then there is the assistant where it shows you all your safety systems your cruise control and everything whenever you are doing that and then you are back to the off-road status so that's how you customize the entire basically display on the driver's display on this amarok is pretty straightforward that way and i like the layout of it it's not too complicated and pretty easy to operate also now when you come to the steering wheel this is a leather covered steering wheel and it's got the volkswagen badging in the middle with this silver color plastic around the switches and also on the periphery of this steering wheel and the button is given on either side but no paddle shifters that are given on this steering wheel and this steering wheel is manually adjustable your tilt and telescopic both so you can find the right settings and on the right side you would find the buttons for your voice control and also the media controls and also the buttons to change all your drivers information and everything and on the left side you would find the buttons for your speed limiter your adaptive cruise control and also the volume buttons that are given 
out here and then uh, adaptive cruise control can also be changed to normal cruise control so you can go from this infotainment screen you go into the vehicle then you go into the driver assistance and then you have the cruise control or the adaptive cruise control you can select which one you want to keep it so every time you switch that on it would just go into that one not the adaptive or or the normal cruise control whatever you've set so yeah that's basically your steering wheel it's nice and big it's a little bit flat bottom slightly but it's still essentially the round one now when you come to the air conditioning control so the air conditioning controls are all inside this 12 inch infotainment screen but there's a button that is given at the bottom some of the buttons that are given so that button is like a menu so you press that and you are led into the climate but anyways on your screen itself there is a climate button so when you press that climate button you can go into the climate settings and if you're outside also you can just change the temperature on the move but essentially the climate control features are all inside the touch screen so you still have to press two three times and look towards the screen in order to operate this climate control a little bit unfriendly i would say and then you go into this climate feature and then on the top you can adjust the fan speed and everything your max ac and everything the flow of air that you want and at the bottom you have the auto the recirculation of air the dual zone air conditioning system that you get on this amer rock and on either side you have the temperature control so you can change the temperature from here and on the passenger side they can change and then there are also buttons which are given for the heated seats that is given on this amer rock but that's pretty much your straightforward climate control system that has been given on this amer rock as i said yeah you still have to look at the screen when you have to change any of the settings out here and when you come to the functionality of the air conditioning it's rather good i would say and it works pretty well it just cools the the car down very well within five minutes which is pretty decent for a car this big because there are also air conditioning vents given for the rear passengers so yeah the air conditioning works pretty well in that case to cool down the car itself now when you come to this infotainment screen you get a 12 inch vertically mounted touch screen that has been given out here and it's pretty big and wide and it's quite easier to see during the daylight also and there's not much of reflection or anything on this screen out here and the menu options are given on top so you can adjust everything and at the bottom also there are options which are your the last option that you've used so basically your android auto apple carplay connectivity or fm or whatever you use all those features are given at the bottom so let me go from the top and show you so you have your first setting as your vehicle option so you go into that one and then you can change your so many options that has been given out here so Volkswagen has basically changed the operating system on this but the screen essentially is from the Ranger but VW has added their own touch to this infotainment screen so you have so many other options lightning and everything mirrors and then there's a drop down menu you can go to the sound audio your phone list driver assistance as I showed you you can change every single driver assistance from here then there is the other options where you can go and click that car mode and you have the different driving modes that you get on this Amarok so you get six different driving modes on this so it's the normal eco tow haul slippery mud ruts deep snow and sand so you can even change the driving modes from the button that is given underneath this infotainment screen so you press that and you are led into this option also but it's essentially the touch screen you can't press that button multiple times to change the drive modes that's the only thing again you have to look onto the screen to change that also then the next option is your radio option then your phone option and then the inbuilt navigation system so you get this inbuilt navigation system which is decently quick i would say and it's quite easier to use it's snappy also even though this is a big screen but yeah quite easier to find your way around you can have your point of interest and everything out here and the next option is your connectivity your media option so in terms of the connectivity you can connect to this infotainment system using bluetooth usb and there is wireless android auto and apple carplay that has been given on this amarok the two next two options are basically that your android auto and apple carplay and that's basically your entire infotainment screen yes it's actually very simple and as i said at the bottom you have the climate controls which are always in front of you so you can press that so that bottom area is dedicated for your climate control also so 
the operations are simple but some of the menu options are a little bit on the inside like if they had put some more options on the screen itself or like bigger widgets out here to control some things yeah that would be easier and maybe some off-road modes where it can show something on the screen itself like your front view because it does not do that while you're off-roading it does not show any of these 360 degree camera system maybe they can utilize that when they update the next version on this thing now when you come to the charging you get two usb ports one type c and one normal and one 12 volt power socket given underneath the air conditioning controls and also one wireless charger that has been given out here in the front and for the rear passengers you get one 12 volt power socket and a three pin plug that has been given out there now on this amarok you get extendable sun visors which is pretty good because these doors are pretty broad that way and pretty wide and also the visibility itself is pretty good in here you get very good visibility all around because of these taller windows and the front glass there's also an sos button that has been given and as i said there's no sunroof or anything that has been given on this amarok but let me know in the comment section below do you actually use the sunroof a lot or is this something like an option that is like a make or break deal for you when you are buying your car and when you come to this gear knob the interesting bit is that first it's a very tiny one in that case and the second thing is that it's very very smooth it's it's like like you just flick it it just does not have any resistance so yeah most of the times when i'm driving i'm actually when i want to put it in the reverse like i've managed to put it into the park because yeah there's not difference in the different sort of uh, drive modes that you get into but it's still like park reverse neutral and the drive mode that you can put this car into and then on the side there are buttons for your manual control and also there's a plus and minus button that has been given so that plus and minus button is to control the gears on this car so the gears that it would shift so that's an interesting concept so you can press the minus button and it would just if your car is in like the manual mode or even the automatic mode so you can set the number of gears the car can go to so if you're off-roading say and if you only want the car to go to the second gear then you can press that minus button and the car would just set itself to go up to two gears or if you want to just use five gears six gears you can just select the gears that you want this car to go into and it would just follow that so basically you can convert this car into six speed eight speed ten speed two speed whatever you like so yeah multiple options that you can customize using those buttons there's also a dial that has been given out here for your two wheel drive your four wheel automatic four high and four low so very straightforward dial that has been given out here and it's also got this plastic feel to it again that's all for ruggedness a lot of plastic used around out here also then at the back there are buttons for your traction control hill descent control and to lock the differentials in the front there is also some more quality bits which are slightly dodgy i would say like near this driver's display there's a bit of this plastic trim that is flopping around even this these switches yeah they also like slide around a little bit the panel itself in terms of the music system you get Harman Kardon music system it sounds pretty good on this Amarok and in terms of the storing capacities in the door cards you can put one and a half liter worth of bottle easily and some more storage that has been given on the side but I think they could have managed to give you some more storage because these door cards are pretty big that way so yeah they can utilize that and underneath the controls for these air conditioning you will have this wireless charger where you can utilize that to put your phones or wallets then there are two flexible cup holders that are given then there is this hand rest inside which you can put like four half a liter water bottle that's about it there's also this glove box which is decently big that you can utilize and then on top of that there is another storage where you can put maybe your phones or wallets there's also another storage that is given out here on the dashboard next to the speaker grill again where you can put your phones and wallets while they are charging there is also a sunglass holder that has been given and in the rear door cards you can put again one and a half liter worth of bottle in both the door cards but not much storage after that again you could have utilized that door card also to put, give you some more storage and in the center armrest you have two cup holders that are provided now there are also more buttons that are given underneath the air conditioning controls one is for your parking lights then there is a volume 
dials that has been given then there is the park assist feature that is given on this amarog then there is the menu option for your climate and then the next option is your drive assistance so the drive assistance is basically your auto start stop auto hold and all of that all that is given inside this system basically or your driver assistance that menu also you can go from inside that by pressing the button and then there is the drive mode button that has been given now when it comes to these seats you get dual tone leather seats that are given the top bit is the ivory one and the bit after that is black one they are perforated seats but they are not the cool seats they are only the heated seats there is also white color stitching and these seats are actually pretty comfortable i really like these seats and longer journeys are going to be quite comfortable in these seats for sure and the bottom bit also has decent amount of support so your thighs are never like hanging in the air but they've got good amount of support they are also pretty broad that way and the backrest also is pretty broad and the side supports yeah they are also quite nice even at the bottom the same thing and in terms of the adjustability eight way electronically adjustable and two way lumbar control on the driver as well as on the passenger side seat and the only bit that is a little hard are these headrests that's the only thing that i find otherwise the seats are pretty comfortable now the new amarok is slightly longer as i mentioned and it's also slightly wider and as a result of that you get decent amount of space in the rear also compared to the previous generation so you have about four fingers worth of knee room out here and the headroom is also pretty decent someone about six feet will be able to fit in here quite well there's a cut out that has been given to give you that extra bit of headroom and also the seats have a bit of a curve so they give you that extra bit of knee room the seats are in my driving position and there is still plenty of knee room out here and you can even slide your legs under the seat not much room though but it's still pretty all right because these seats are pretty comfortable as they were in the front and not just that you get good amount of support underneath your thigh from these seats and you're not like your your sort of legs are hanging in the air not like that but on this is actually pretty wonderful in that case and you get the same dual tone leather seat with this ivory bit on the top and also at the bottom perforated seats but they are not the heater or the cool seats just for the design purposes in the middle is just plain leather that has been given and there are three headrests that are given there is also a bit of a tunnel that is given but if you're sitting in the middle the seat in the middle is actually pretty comfortable and even the back rest yeah that's also quite decent so someone can fit in here for longer journeys also you can have three proper adults fit in here a little bit of room here and there but yeah essentially you can have a third one out here in comfort there are also air conditioning vents that are given you can just control the flow of air and the direction of air again that's also covered with a lot of plastic around it and at the bottom as i mentioned you have 230 volt three pin socket and also a 12 volt power socket and in terms of the door cards out here you don't have the leather covered top bit but instead just normal plastic door cards entirely just where you're going to be resting hands that's leather covered with the white color stitching the buttons and switches everything is in normal plastic there are also pocket storage in both the driver and the passenger side seat there is also this hand rest but you know to open it you have to give it a bit of a push on the inside and then pull it i'm going to come to that why that has been given and you have two normal cup holders but it's a bit of a smaller hand rest that has been given that's the only thing and these seats can be folded upwards and there is storage underneath these seats so you can store like all your tool case your fire extinguisher everything sits at the bottom of this so there's plenty of storage underneath the seats that has been utilized and you can lift these seats by it took a little while for me to find this strap and you have to pull this one and then fold the seats up and then you have to tie it down to this thread that has been given so which is why the handrest has to be fixed and not like collapsible on its own otherwise yeah it would not hold the weight of these seats but yeah essentially the storage has been given at the bottom there are also pockets that are given on the top for your phone so when they are charging or maybe if you want to watch something you can just leave them in there so that's given on both the driver and the passenger side seats overall i really like 
the space arrangement out here on this new Amarok and definitely you can sit like five proper adults into this new Amarok. So this new Volkswagen Amarok is powered by a 2.3 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine that produces 298 horsepower and 453 newton meters of torque and this engine is mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission that sends the power to all the four wheels via the four motion drive system that you get on this Volkswagen and let me come first to the engine because you may think that this is a 2.3 liter turbocharged engine but surprisingly it's a very good powerhouse so it's very smooth the power delivery is good yes sometimes you do feel that you know a bigger engine would make sense but on a day-to-day -day basis this engine is actually pretty sweet because you get good amount of torque that's for sure when the turbo kicks in after like 2000 rpm so that's not a bad thing because you get lots of rich torque so you can accelerate you can gain a good amount of speed so that's going to be easier but when you come to the gearbox which is a 10 speed automatic now the gearbox tends to be a little confused when it's kind of changing gears also it's a bit clunky this is what i find and that's the only thing but because there are 10 gears so you get good amount of fuel efficiency from this system so you get on a day-to-day -day running anywhere around eight kilometers per liter which is pretty good for a truck which is this massive it's still a pretty big truck in that sense and on a longer run you would get around nine to nine and a half kilometers per liter so again that's a pretty good point so if you want to daily drive this pickup then you can do that too so again as you see like it's taking longer to shift to gears and also it tends to hold up the revs a lot when i don't know in anticipation that you want to accelerate or it's just deciding as to which gear to go into so it takes a little longer that's for sure when it wants to move into certain gears so yeah that's the only thing but otherwise the powerhouse itself is pretty plenty and ample for day-to-day -day use now when you come to the suspensions you get a monoshock setup on this Amarok Aventura and also the Amarok Panamericana whereas the base variant and the other one which was the style gets a different setup but this definitely helps you in getting a smoother ride the damping is a bit too harsh I find and the back suspension is your uh, leaf spring whereas the front ones are a little bit softer that's for sure and when the bed is empty which is pretty obvious with all the pickups but it's still the bed on this is pretty stiff enough so you don't feel that floppiness but there's small amount i will admit and there's also a bit of a roll although this has decently hard setup but the ride itself is comfortable because the interior the seats and everything is pretty comfortable so and it's soft so it makes the journey pretty comfortable in that sense but obviously when you put a little bit of load onto those uh, back cargo space then you will have the ride quality that will become much more smoother in that case but otherwise it's a little bit bumpy also especially when you have some more passengers in the back i've definitely experienced the ride quality to change slightly a improve in that sense i would say when there are passengers and also cargo in the back i've been in to camping just about yesterday so yeah i could feel the difference now once the car is again empty and with no people and cargo inside so yeah the suspensions that way are pretty compliant and they also help you with the steering ability also so when you come to the steering you get a good feedback from the steering i would say and the previous generation lacked that you know that sharpness from the steering but on this one it's, it's definitely improved because the steering feels sharp it's got good amount of feedback to it it's also light and yeah sometimes it may feel a little too light at lower speeds as if like you know it just does not make you realize that you're driving a pickup this big so that's the only thing but otherwise it's, it's all right and the suspensions do help yeah you know elevate the steering experience on this thing and there are also lots of vibrations that that are just directly transmitted into the cabin also through the steering wheel and also a lot of through the moving parts like your 
your lever and yeah once you place your hand you realize like there's a bit of vibrations that are going on but in terms of the noise there is a bit of wind whooshing very slight although the front side glass are all double glazed so they have that extra bit of protection so it helps you with the noise control on the inside the engine yes does tend to get a little stressed out let me show you once i accelerate and there's also a bit of tire noise at higher speed and as i said otherwise there's not much so let me accelerate yeah so there's where you have a little bit of noise from this engine once you you know accelerate a little harder now when you come to the brakes you get four disc brakes on this new amarok and in terms of the performance from them i find them to be decent i would say because yeah it's, it's a huge pickup so you know to stop it's still pretty sharp and the pedal setup is decent and it stops well that's what i can tell you for sure now when you come to the 4x4 system on this amarok so this obviously is the top trim so it's got 20 inch rims and i didn't want to you know risk scratching those rims but if you are a fan of off-roading and if you would really want to do it then the pan americana is the trim to go for because it comes with the 18 inch rims and it's got the 4x4 dedicated system to it and it's also got bits and bobs which are much more off-road friendly because on this you have the chrome bits in the front and in the back and yeah you might end up scratching them or so so or damaging them so which is why the difference between this and the pan americana is basically that you know you have more chrome bits but otherwise essentially everything on the inside is similar to the pan americana version so yeah i think that is more suitable for off-roading this you can take it onto courses where there is like just light bit of sand and rocks which are like mud and rut and sort of thing so you can definitely take this car into that sort of region for sure maybe you can even do off-roading i'm not saying you cannot do dune bashing in this one you can if you want to i mean you can try it out and it will do because it is essentially got its underpinnings from the ford ranger which has proven to be a very decent pickup truck in fact one of the best this year in 2023 so yeah if it's the same thing then this will do very well for off-roading now when you come to the safety systems you get six airbags two for the front driver and the passenger two side airbags again for the driver and the passenger there are curtain airbags given in the frames out here and there are also child isofix points given in both the rear seats and there's also a 360 degree camera system which is pretty helpful for sure because this is such a big truck especially if you're trailering something then you have that view also but it's just that as i said you can't get to see front view when you're off-roading or the rear view or anything nothing sort of that but the output from that is all right i i think it's decent it's it's got at night some darker patches but i don't mind because you still have a 360 degree camera system which is super helpful to maneuver this pickup around in the town in tighter parking spaces now when you come to the other safety systems you have abs there is also ebd there is also adaptive cruise control there is also the lane keep assist there's also the lane departure warning but i have to just switch it off every single time i switch on the car so yeah that's the only thing so you get essentially all the safety systems as front and rear passenger collision warning all of that is given on this new amarok so yeah it's pretty loaded in terms of it, the safety systems in fact when you're driving this pickup you would think that it is exactly like a volkswagen tiguan or a Terramont. the right feel is exactly that you don't feel that you're driving a big pickup in that sense so yeah the driving position and everything is pretty spot on on this now when it comes to the pricing so the base variant which is the comfort line comes in at 149,900 dirhams the pan americana comes in at 190,000 dirhams 400 something i'm gonna put the exact price this is on your screen whereas this variant which is the top of the line aventura comes in at 197,000 400 something i'm going to put the exact price on your screen so yeah essentially it's nearly 200 000 let's say with your optional paint 
options it goes to 199000 dirhams also so in terms of the pricing it's a bit on the expensive side yes i agree but look if you want a pickup truck a posh pickup truck then this is one of the best options right now that you can find because it's got quality materials on the inside the exterior looks pretty polished and pretty premium when you look at it there is enough of cargo space but i would suggest that if you are looking just for a daily driver then the base variant is more than enough for 149000 there is because it's got everything it's, it's just got 17 inch rims and some more lesser features like smaller screen smaller drivers display so yeah that's the only thing that you trade in but essentially everything else is same exact engine exact drive modes and everything and if you are someone who wants to do a lot of off roading then pan americana is definitely the one that you should go for but as a daily driver then with fully loaded features this aventura makes the sense to go for so yeah i mean you can just shortlist whatever features you are looking for and according to that decide which model trim you want to go for anyways that's pretty much it for this video give this video a thumbs up thank you for watching this video if you want to subscribe to my channel then you can click here and if you want to watch more videos then click here i shall see you in the next video bye bye take care and drive safe